Knox Fan Events is incredibly pleased to welcome artist Elena Markolvova for the fourth episode of Curated and Curious. Elena is a fantastic watercolorist focusing on double exposure style paintings featuring the best of BC landscape and animals. Elena also creates bespoke map work of local cities and townships. So hello uh, and good morning. How are you? Hi, I'm really good. Thank you for having me here. Oh, we're really happy to have you here. Um, why don't we start by having you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the type of work you do as an artist. Um, so hello, my name is Elena and uh, I'm a watercolor artist. Um, I moved to Canada eight years ago and uh, I'm just super happy and lucky to call this place my new home. I uh, work with watercolor and watercolor inks and um, I love painting um, animals with a mix of landscape in them and I really enjoy creating maps. Fantastic. And I know that your website, in on your website, in your bio, uh, you mentioned that you've kind of always been an artist and that you had a really supportive mom. Um, do you want to yeah. tell us a little bit more about that? I think because you also mentioned you went to art schools as a child, right? Yeah. Yes, I did. So um, I was painting as long as I can remember myself. Even in kindergarten, I had some little exhibition. And then uh, uh, one day I can, I remember it really clearly. Uh, my mom came into the room. It was summer vacation and I was just sitting in my room painting as usual. And she just said, okay, get ready. We're going to sign you up for the art school. I was like, sure, let's go. <laughs> so starting September that year, I was 10. Um, I just started the art school and I would go there three or four times a week for a few hours after my regular school. Um, it was amazing just to find like-minded kids because I was pretty lonely because I would just kind of be very shy and just you know, like be my own bubble creating and like reading. So here were other kids who would also be interested in art and um, I learned lots of different techniques and medium, we tried lots of different things as a kid and I think um, what kind of had a huge impact on me was my first teacher. She was very encouraging and supportive of all creative ideas. Our class was like the best. Most of the kids from our class uh, became designers or uh, different creative uh, artists, uh, ceramic artists, textile, like lots of different things. But it, it's, it's amazing. So I think it was very important for me to start as a kid and follow my dream at that age. And thanks to my mom, like, honestly, I don't know where would I be without her, if she wouldn't catch that when I was so little and to see me as an artist, even then. That's so special. It's so, so special to have um, a supportive parent who's there to, to yeah, encourage and, and allow. And look at where you are today, right? You're, you're doing know, it for a living. Know. Yeah, like even then, um, so I spent seven years at the art school as a kid and then after I graduated, um, it was a decision where I would go to, to get my degree. Mm -hmm. So one of the possibility was to take her actually to become a journalist. Um, I was very passionate about that and I was working at the local newspaper since I was 15. So lots of people thought that I would become a journalist and go somewhere to either work at the news or the newspaper magazine. Um, or there was a possibility to go uh, for art university and um, take a design and arts course, which was, um, which would have like, kind of like made me move to another city, like four hours drive uh, from my hometown. But, and my parents, like, well, you know, as an artist, you don't, you're not going to make much money, but they, they saw me as being very passionate about it and they still support that. And now they're super proud. Like my dad would always come to every exhibition, even though like he would have to drive like in the middle of the night to make it uh, there or go through like horrible weather, <laughs> would still come and support me every time he'd be there, like be very silent, um, kind of like, standing on the back but he would like look at me and he'd be so proud of me oh that's so fantastic 
that's so that's such a lovely thing to have mm -hmm. and I'm I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Um, you grew up in Russia, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and then you are now obviously here in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. So um do you want to tell us a little bit of about the transition and and from what you've said before you mentioned that your parents are also local here in Vancouver as well? Oh, no, they live in Russia. They still Oh, they live in Russia. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They still live in Russia. Um but also like even as I was like I was like teenager I would still have that feeling that I kind of need to go somewhere like I don't belong here even though I, um, by the time I graduated university I was a very successful artist there working in a huge media corporation um, doing design work mostly uh, but I was still kind of like not happy with what I've been doing and uh, I wasn't really happy in my personal life and I had that feeling like wanting to go somewhere I would go for like a date and would meet a guy and was like oh that's not the guy I like <laughs> something's wrong there like like it wasn't quite first five, five first five seconds like up oh, sorry not you and um and I was just uh saving actually I was saving money for my brighter future since I was little and I, I actually had the um coffee can uh, labeled for my bright future where I would put like, all my savings and then I opened my bank account just put everything there um, and after graduation I was like well what's next I kind of I need to go somewhere originally I was planning to go to England and study design mm -hmm. uh, but it was just so expensive at the time and there was this amazing opportunity to take internship program in Canada in Vancouver so I was like, okay, I guess I'll go to Canada. <laughs> and here I am now, I'm married, I have a kid, and um, I just feel so right to be here. It feels just like home. No, like this is my home now. Like I, about like, when I think about Russia, that's that's not my home anymore. It's just like, that's where I grew up, but this is my home now. And I'm, this is the perfect place for me to be for sure. Oh, that's so fantastic. I'm so glad that you're here with us. We're happy to have yeah. you. And I'm I'm sure your husband and is it is a daughter or a son? Son. It's a, son. It's a boy, yeah. Oh, I'm sure they're both very happy that you're here as well. <laughs> Since you uh, talked a little bit about how much you uh, love Vancouver and how uh, fitting it's felt to you, mm -hmm. I know you mainly work in watercolors at the moment. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about um, why you're drawn to watercolor and and the images that you paint with watercolor because you've got some a beautiful uh, kind of style about you that I'm really yeah. excited that maybe thank you, you can tell thank us you about. For that. Um, yeah, watercolor for me it's just like magic. Honestly, I was introduced to this medium when I was 11, and since then I couldn't find any other material that would feed my soul so so well. Um, it's very challenging, like uh, you need to think through every layer how you're gonna paint the artwork from the very beginning to the end. You also can almost never fix anything on your painting, which if it's done, it's done, it's there. So I love that a lot and I also love the ability of this medium to create this amazing, interesting ways to blend the color and pigments and create something unbelievably beautiful without kind of your work there so you put some colors and it just mix and blend create this stuff seriously it's magic for me so I um, I love that a lot and with landscapes and animals um, even though I was born in Siberia I never saw a bear or any other wildlife ever <laughs> yeah People will call us like, well, look, you're from Siberia. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you have bears walking in the streets. Like, no, we don't. Here we do. Like, I saw so many of them. But on my first trip to Pemberton, I saw this black bear and I was just like, I was freaking out. I was so happy to see one. It was like, it was fluffy and his fur was so shiny. I just wanted to jump out of the car and like run to him and hug him. Like, I didn't do any of that, but it was the moment it was like, oh, wow, this is so unbelievable the wildlife is so close to us we all live in the same community coexisting together and um 
I came home after that and I was just like, I, I want to remember that moment forever. I want to paint something. And I was thinking, oh, should I paint the bear or the landscape? And then I remember that during my university years, we did some photography, double exposure uh, experiments. It was like, oh, I can just combine both and paint that. So that's how I started uh, painting my first bear. And then well, I just started adding a few more animals to the collection and now I have like 30 of them. And um, it's like every time I would go somewhere, I would meet something new, like uh, we'd go to Alberta and I would see uh, rams standing on the side of the road or eagles flying out around us. So it's like every time I'd find my inspiration and I don't need to go anywhere far, it's just like 10 minutes away, I have Alouette Lake and uh, beautiful mountains. So everything's so close and so beautiful. I think your work really, um, you kind of spoke about the, the magic and the excitement and the, and the soulfulness. And I think, mm -hmm. I think your work is really exciting because it speaks a lot to the, that experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why when I saw it, I was like, oh, there's something here. Like it was so nice to see that kind of passion in work and that excitement through fresh eyes, I think. Mm -hmm. So Thank, Thank you. you. Like, I, I always like try to think about like whenever I plan a new painting with the animal, I kind of imagine living in its natural habitat, um, trying to kind of feel their spirit, get into their skin and just imagine that, like living like that animal. That's why sometimes it takes me a really long time to create something new because it takes me so long to kind of get there mentally so I can put everything I have and onto the paper so I can put my feelings on it. And people can feel that too. And I'm really grateful for that, for sure. That's very cool. I love that. I love that connection that you're able to make with other people. So we've talked about your animals and your landscape mm -hmm. pieces, but I also, and you mentioned at the beginning uh, that you work on some uh, map work as well. And uh, you also have one, is it the uh, Museum of Vancouver? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so I started at the map collection uh, with the uh, drawing and painting of Vancouver map as I was planning to go to Russia to visit my family and I couldn't find any souvenirs, magnets, like some little things to bring to my friends and family with the Vancouver artwork. That was like six years ago. So since then there was like a few more things added to the market. But at that time there was nothing really or like some like Chinese made um, magnets and I didn't want to bring that. I want to bring something local. It's like, well, I guess I just have to make one myself. <laughs> and um, I created the Vancouver map. Um, and then uh, I was participating in the home and design show. Uh, where they gave me the opportunity to create the artwork on uh, three by three feet canvas and I could kind of choose anything to do with that and I was like oh well, I can make a huge map of Vancouver so I did that and then um, it's like power of Instagram I just posted the map and tagged a few local venues where I thought it would be really nice to showcase and the Museum of Vancouver reached out as a call, you know, like but we, we have a perfect wall, it's blue color, it's right at the entrance and it's just perfect size. Would you willing to donate? I was like, sure. <laughs> well, I'm just being like uh, 30 years old and having your artwork at the museum, it's just like, oh, like every time I have to kind of pinch myself that I have that. That's and, so uh, exciting. It, it's it's amazing, um, but also maps. It's just like it's a little bit different kind of artwork than any other painting or drawing. It's a lot of detail, hard hard work, and it takes so much time to create one. Or maybe like for some people it would be easier, but with my mentality and how I'm very detail oriented, I need to think all of things through. So since having a kid, I didn't really have much time to create a new one. Um, but I have a few sketched already. They're just waiting for their perfect moment. So when the time comes, there'll be more, more maps for sure. Yeah. They're so cool. I know is is um I think I saw them on your website or your Etsy store, I'm not sure, but um you've done a couple different locations in the mm -hmm. past as well, right? So you've done yeah. 
Vancouver and Vancouver and New Westminster, uh, Fort Langley. I have Calgary, um, Tri Cities. Like I used to look around. White Rock. And White, White Rock. Rock. Yes, I'm I am um, going to like historical places. So um, kind of something that has. Like, yeah, like history and some kind of like feeling to it, not just the buildings, not 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 modern buildings, which like something that has their own, yeah, their own history. So I would usually kind of create that. Yeah, I uh, I Fort Langley is one of my favorite places to go and uh, look at the antique store and buy a book and have a coffee and and kind of just hang out. And I was so excited when I saw it. It was. Um, mm -hmm. It's funny how like a familiar thing just like turns on a light bulb and it grabs your interest that way. Yeah, and also like, funny like lots of people feel very connected to the places where they live. Um, so people of White Rock are very passionate about the White Rock and they're very proud to living there and they want to have either the piece on the wall to like yeah this is where I live. I also had a guy from England. He's he's in his eighties now. And he was here when he um, in White Rock building some new roads when he was a teenager, like 20, like in his 20s. And he found me on Etsy and he's writing like, oh, you know, I really need that map because it brings me memories of my early age when I had the most fun. Like, and he wrote the whole huge story about him, like whatever he was doing here, how he would go to some specific place to have fish and chips and hang out with boys and have a beer. And like, it was amazing. Was like, oh my God, thank you for sharing that story. It's like, it's, it's amazing how you can connect to people through just like pieces of paper, but there is so much on it and people feel so connected. Absolutely, yeah. Um, speaking of making connections with people, after talking about all of your beautiful work and especially your maps and your your animal pieces um do you want to let us know how we can uh look at your work or or purchase your work if uh people were so inclined where mm -hmm. they can find you sure um i have my own website it's uh elenamarkelova.com where you can find my original paintings and a little bit information about my projects I also have its show where you can find art prints, stationery, notepads, even like sweatshirts with my paintings on it. Um, plus, feel free to connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. And um, I'm very lucky to have a few stores around Vancouver that carry my artwork as well. So you can find them there. Perfect. And I think there's a listing of stores that carry your product physically on your mm -hmm. website as well. Yeah. So I'll make sure um, when we post this video that we have all the links to your social media and your website as well. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, no problem. I'd love to hear a little bit about what your plans for the future are. Um, do you have any projects on the go or what do you, what are you kind of thinking about taking on next? I have a few more well, a few more. <laughs> I have a lot <laughs> planned, um, especially with the animals. It's nature is never ending, um, just a fountain of inspiration. So I have a few more animals hopefully coming this year before Christmas. And then I really hope to create a few large pieces of my whales from Whale a Day project that I did last year, creating a rail a day so now i want to make them really big and hopefully have an exhibition so we'll see how that, that goes so exciting and how if you is a physical exhibition or a virtual one or both i guess we'll have to see <laughs> but yeah like i'm trying to approach some galleries um uh, to showcase my artwork next year so fantastic hopefully, hopefully. um speaking of I guess COVID. Um, do you want to talk a little bit, or have you found that COVID has affected you or your work or your sales any differently? Um, it had a huge impact on me for sure. First of all, because of all the events and um, just uh, markets have been canceled. Uh, they 
that kind of cut significant uh, revenue, but my online sales went up. So yeah, people switched to going online, uh, but it's still not the same because you miss that connection, um, like one-to-one -one opportunity to talk about your art and where people can actually share their amazement. <laughs> and, and, and as an artist, you really need that. You need to have that little bit of fuel that's what are you doing it's not for nothing like people enjoy that a lot and then also i think it mostly hit me mentally for a few months i wasn't really able to create anything new and uh, i was just kind of stuck in my in my head and it took lots of work to get where i am right now being like happy and actually being able to create and bring joy to people's lives so i think it's really important to kind of focus more on the mental side of the COVID rather than materialistic things like revenues and sales. They don't, overall, they don't bring much to your life, but whatever you have in your heart and your soul, that's what's the most important. So I'm, I'm grateful for my friends and my family and everyone who is um, like reaching out to me on social media and, uh, writing those wow your artwork is so gorgeous so that that brings lots of joy to me and i'm happy to share my artwork with them as well yeah. maintaining that connection is super important mm -hmm. yeah it's super important Absolutely. yeah i think especially for artists we're so like emotionally unstable <laughs> in some way and um we need that a lot like to to know that our artwork is loved by people that we're not creating just yeah like to, to put it on the shelf and not show anyone so I think that um that love and that appreciation that people are able to give someone's work is the other half of what keeps something a piece alive like when mm -hmm. you know you create it as an artist and you breathe life into it and you you give it an individual feeling and 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 then I think it's not complete until somebody else makes a connection with it I don't know if that makes any sense but. yeah it does it does it does make sense it's like the piece only leaves if there's like yeah like I created and then somebody else finds a connection with it so it's like it's 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 a two-sided work yeah absolutely well uh, I think we've magically made it through, I think, all of my questions in one way or another. Did you have anything you would like to add or further share or let people know? Or You just, um, I think the, the best advice for me would be to listen to your heart and to do what you actually love and enjoy. And um, just listening to what you feel is right it's the most important thing that's what actually makes you happy um because if if i wouldn't listen to myself if like not kind of if i wouldn't go to chase my dreams i wouldn't be where i am right now and i was very lucky that i had help from my mother and my 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 parents and my friends to also get where I am, but some people aren't so lucky. So I think it's very important to listen, listen to yourself, listen to your heart and try different things, but get where you're absolutely happy with your life and what you do. I, uh, I really appreciate you taking some time today uh, to talk with us and tell us uh, your story and your connection to Vancouver and art and and all those wonderful things, life in general. Um, so thank you. We really appreciate it. I'm thank very you. excited to share <laughs> your story with you, your story with everybody. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. It's amazing to have the opportunity to talk about my artwork. <laughs>